Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. Welcome to my next series on applications of quadratics. Today we're going to look at the discriminant. So let's get right to it. So by using the quadratic formula, how many distinct real solutions do each of the following quadratics have? So for the first one, we're going to have x equals negative b, which will be 12 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, very important, you're going to see why this is relevant, is what's inside the bracket. So we've got 12 squared. The negative doesn't make a difference because we are squaring. So we have 0. So we have 12 plus or minus 0 over 2, which just leaves us with 6. So one real root. Now for part b, we have x equals the negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, in this case, you're going to get 1, because 1 squared 1, minus 4 times 3. So 1 minus 12 is minus 11. So you get 1 plus or minus root minus 11 over 2. Now, here we can see that we can't square root negative numbers, which is why we say distinct real solutions. Because in further maths, we can move into complex numbers, and this does have solutions, but they're not real. So we have to say, that this does not have any real solutions. The final one, we have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times 1. So we have 2 plus or minus. Now here, we're going to get minus 2 squared, 4, plus another 4, 8. So root 8 over 2. Now, in terms of simplification for that, we can say 2 plus or minus root 8 is 2 root 2 over 2. So we have two distinct real solutions. We can divide everything by 2. And that's our solution. So for part A, we can see when the square root, what's inside the square root is 0, we have 1 distinct. When what's inside the square root is negative, we have 0 real solutions. And then what's inside the square root is a positive number. We have two distinct real solutions, which then brings us to what we call the discriminant of a quadratic, which is b squared minus 4ac, which is what we know is inside the square root of the quadratic formula. Now, what we showed is that when the discriminant, when what's inside the square root is positive, we have distinct real roots. And that was the part c of the last example. When it's negative, like when we did the square root of minus 11, there was no real roots. This is what the quadratic would look like. It wouldn't even cross the x-axis. And the first one, where the square root was 0, we have what we call equal roots, where there's only one solution. And in part A, it was, it was 6. And that's a quadratic that just touches the x-axis. Now, just a quick note. If they say that it only has real roots, then that could be 1 or 2. We say then that b squared minus 4ac is bigger than or equal to 0. So the reason also we add distinct, distinct indicates that there are two that are not the same. Because technically, with this first one, when we factorize, we get x minus 6, x minus 6. So we do get two solutions. Both of them are 6, but they're not distinct, right? So this applies to some questions. Given that the equation kx squared minus 2x plus 3 minus 2k is 0 has equal roots, find the possible values of k. So the first thing you want to say for equal roots is that the discriminant is 0. And then we just label what is b, um, a, and c. So b is the coefficient of x, that's minus 2, minus 4. a in this case is k, the coefficient of x squared. c is the terms independent of x. Remember, k is a number. So we have 3 minus 2k is 0. 
Now we just expand. So we have 4. This is minus 4k times 3. Minus 4k times 3 is minus 12k. Then minus 4k times minus 2k will be plus 8k squared. Now we can divide everything by 4, and then I'm going to write the k squared first. So we can factorize here 2k, k. We're going to have 1 and 1, and both of them have to be minus. So we get k is 1 over 2, and k equals 1. Given that the equation 2x x plus 1 equals kx minus 8 has real and distinct roots, show that k squared minus 4k minus 60 is bigger than 0. The first thing we probably want to do is expand everything, move it to one side. So we have 2x squared plus 2x equals kx minus 8. Move everything over. And then we factorize out the x, yeah, because we want the coefficient of x. So we write plus open a bracket, write x at the end, and just read the coefficient, so 2 minus k, then plus 8. Now for it to have real and distinct roots, the discriminant has to be bigger than 0. Now what's b in this case? It's 2 minus k, minus 4, a is 2, c is 8, expand, so we're left with k squared minus 4k, and then we have 4 minus 64, which is minus 60, is bigger than 0. Then for part b, find the possible values of k. So this is just quadratic inequalities. We have k and k. For 60, we're going to use 10 and 4. To make minus 4, we need minus 10 and plus 4. So the roots to this equation are going to be 10 and minus 4. Just need a general sketch of that quadratic. When is it bigger than zero? So those, these are the end bits. So we're just saying x is less than minus four and, oh, k in this case, k is less than minus four and k is bigger than 10. Prove that the equation x squared minus kx plus 2k equals five has real and distinct roots for all values of k. Real and distinct roots is to do with the discriminant being positive. We need to prove, so essentially they're saying prove that the discriminant is always positive. Well, let's rearrange first. x squared minus kx plus 2k minus 5 is 0. So in this case, b squared minus 4ac is going to be minus k squared minus 4. a is 1 and c is 2k minus 5. Yeah, don't forget the 2k. It's easy to just write down minus 5. So it's the term independent of x. Now we're not going to say it equals or is bigger than or less than anything because we're going to prove that this expression is always positive. So we have k squared. Then we have minus 4 times 2k is minus 8k. Then we get plus 20. Now we need to show that that is always positive. How do we show quadratics are always positive or negative, etc.? is to complete the square. Essentially, you're figuring out the turning point. It's a positive quadratic. Where's its lowest point? So we're going to do k minus half the coefficient 4 squared. Then we subtract this number squared, which is 16, and then we add 20. So we get k minus 4 squared plus 4, which means the minimum value of the quadratic is 4. Therefore, b squared minus 4ac is always positive. Hence, the equation has real and distinct roots for all values of k. So for proof questions, always write a statement at the end. And that's it, guys. This is how we apply the discriminant. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to keep looking at applications of quadratics. I'll see you guys there. If you want more content, then make sure you subscribe. If you learned something today, then please hit the like button. It helps me out massively. And I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Peace.